like. So, as I mentioned yesterday, my, my three-year-old daughter loves Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the original with, with uh, Gene Wilder. And it is a great film. I mean, it, it does hold up. It's really quirky and weird and odd. It's not the stupid Johnny Depp version. Um, and aside from the bizarre, the bizarre psychedelic 1970s, we're going to go through the tunnel of love and watch chickens get beheaded routine that happens about a third of the way through the film. Uh, the, the rest of the film you can show to kids so long as they don't understand that the kids are actually in moral danger. So I thought that the best, the best log line for, for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory was, Mad Chocolatier invites children to factory, kills them off one by one. I mean, because that's, that's basically the plot of the film. In any case, here's a little bit of the trip. For those who haven't seen Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory and you've been stuck under a rock for the last 40 years, uh, here's a little bit of the trailer. to hear from you. The world is waiting. Can't you shut up? I'm busy. You're a rotten mean father. You'll never give me anything I want. I won't go to school till I have it. Violet. Call it, mother. Open it, Charlie. Let's see that golden ticket. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Let's hear about this film. Okay, so a, a couple of quick notes. First of all, the guy who wrote the score uh, was uh, was Anthony Newley, who was actually a big Broadway star. Uh, he he wrote the score to this, and it is a really really good score. A bunch of classic songs in this. Uh, I've got a golden ticket, obviously a classic song. Uh, Imagination, obviously a classic song. Um, the Candyman can classic song, a bunch of classic songs from this film, uh, and it is educational, right? I mean, you've got the Oompa Loompas going around singing about how kids should stop being brats, which is pretty great. Uh, there, there is one, when, when my daughter whines, uh, I do say to her, do you remember the girl from Willy Wonka who, who complains and, and who says, I want it now. You remember that girl? You know what happens to her? And my daughter goes, she went down the chute. So that's right. <laughs> but... Don't worry, she's not terrified. She thinks it's hilarious because she has my sense of humor. In any case, uh, the, the, I, here's my theory about Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. My theory about Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is that the real villain of the piece is, is not... Uh, it, it, there, there really is no villain. If you watch the film, right, not to spoil the ending, but the person you think, Slugworth, the person you think is a villain, he ain't the villain. The real villain of this, of this movie, and apparently this, the Honest Trailers came to the same conclusion, I guess, but the real villain of this film is Grandpa Joe. Okay, Grandpa Joe is the real villain of this film because Grandpa Joe, the plot of the movie is that Grandpa Joe has been lying in bed with all four grandparents have been lying in bed literally for 20 years. They're like welfare deadbeats. And the mother, Charlie's mom, has been slaving away at a laundry factory, working the laundry by hand. And Charlie is running papers. He's doing a paper route in order to raise money so that they can take care of these four no good grandparents who just sit around all day. And the reason I say that they're no good is because Grandpa Joe who spends the entire first part of the film telling Charlie that he's just going to get things because he wants them, right? This, that's Grandpa Joe's mentality, that you're just going to get that golden ticket because you deserve the golden ticket, which is not the way the world works. Grandpa Joe is sitting there in that bed doing nothing and saying, wouldn't it be great if Charlie had more time to play? He, we should give him more time to play like a child should. And the mother says, well, all four of you are in bed. Literally the minute that Charlie walks, the minute that Charlie walks in with the golden ticket, what happens to Grandpa Joe? Why, look at that. He's on his feet. He's dancing around. He's singing. He's doing an old vaudeville act. Literally within 60, so for he goes, I haven't been out of this bed in 20 years. All you needed was for somebody to win that lottery ticket, and boom, you're out of that bed like a shot, weren't you? So what's happening to you, you old deadbeat? He gets up, and he's dancing around and singing. He's a happy camp, but the villainy doesn't end there. Okay, that's not where the villainy ends. So then they go to the chocolate factory, and Grandpa Joe is basically telling Charlie everything is fine, everything's great. And then he's already seen. Okay, they've already seen that Augustus Gloop is drinking from the Chocolate River and boom, goes right up the pipe, right? Y'all remember this? Okay, Grandpa Joe tells Charlie, so they've already realized it's not good to take things that don't belong to you. Grandpa Joe tells Charlie, let's have a bit of this fizzy lifting drink. And it's Grandpa Joe's idea, right? Stupid Grandpa Joe. He's like, let's, let's have some of this fizzy lifting drink. And Charlie, because he's a kid, he's like, okay, let's do it. They get in the fizzy lifting drink. They almost get killed. They finally get down because they discover that burping works. And then at the very end of the film, 
Grandpa Joe is informed by Willy Wonka that they lose. They get nothing because they broke the rules. They stole fizzy lifting drink. What's Grandpa Joe's response? Not to apologize, not to be contrite. He's, he calls Willy Wonka a cheat and a swindler and then says to, and then says to Charlie, let's take the, the everlasting gobstopper and take it over to Slugworth. Right? Let's take it over there, which was Slugworth's original offer. You give me the everlasting gobstopper and I'll give you a bunch of money. And Grandpa Joe's willing to take him up on that. So he's a corrupt old man, too. And what happens? Charlie says no, and he gives the everlasting gobstopper back to Willy Wonka, and that's when he wins the big prize. So the entire movie is really about Charlie learning that his grandpa's an idiot. The entire, the entire movie is about how Charlie has to reject the amorality of his, of his leech grandfather and learn, to, and learn to be a good moral person in spite of his leech grandfather saying he deserves everything in the world, including taking other people's stuff. That's my conservative take on Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. 